Here's a look at the latest events happening in financial planning. Brought to you by Jennifer Lang Financial Services, where we help American workers and small business owners prepare and protect their life insurance and retirement portfolios from stock market loss. We specialize in annuities, 401k and IRA rollovers, life insurance and small business owner 401k retirement plans. Please remember to click the like button and subscribe to catch all of our financial news and retirement planning updates. The following video is for informational purposes only. Please consult your tax professional regarding your personal situation. Let's get started. The year 2021 was an exceptionally good year for residential real estate sales across the United States. Many individuals sold their personal residences and made sizable profits. These individuals include federal employees and retirees living throughout the U.S. As they prepare their 2021 federal income tax returns, these individuals who sold their principal residences during 2021 need to consider these questions. 1. What are the tax consequences resulting from the sale of their principal residences? And 2. If required, how are the sales reported on their 2021 federal income tax returns? This video presents a discussion on the tax consequences of selling a principal residence. The tax rules associated with the sale of a principal residence are contained in Internal Revenue Code, IRC, Section 121. The sale of an individual's principal residence is generally not reported on an individual's tax return unless the individual, number one, incurs a capital gain resulting from the sale and does not qualify to exclude the capital gain from tax. Or, number two, receives a Form 10-9-9-S, proceeds from real estate transactions, from the real estate settlement company or real estate attorney. A sample Form 10-9-9-S is presented here. In general, real estate agents, title companies, and real estate lawyers responsible for closing a residence sale transaction are required to issue Form 10-9-9-S, a copy of which is sent to the IRS, to the seller of a real estate property. An exception applies for the sale of a principal residence in which the sales price $250,000 or less, or $500,000 or less for individuals filing as married filing joint or certain surviving spouses. This non-issuance of a Form 10-9-9-S occurs only if the real estate reporting person obtains written certification from the seller. The certification must include information to support the conclusion that the full gain on the sale is excludable from the seller's income. If there are joint sellers, each seller, whether married or not, must make written certification for the exception to whether the reporting the sale via a Form 10-9-9-S applies sale of principal residence, capital gains tax exclusion. An individual is permitted to exclude from income up to $250,000 of capital gain resulting from the sale of a personal residence if the following tests are met. A ownership and use. The individual must have owned and used the home as a principal residence for at least two out of the five years ending on the date of the sale. The two years do not have to be consecutive. A frequency limitation. The exclusion applies to only one sale every two years, Note the following. Number one, a home sale gain attributable to a period of non-qualified use cannot be excluded. A period of non-qualified use is any time after 2008 in which the property is not used as the individual's principal residence and two, unmarried individuals who jointly own a principal residence may each exclude up to $250,000 of gain if the IRC section 121 requirements are met. Sale of a principal residence capital gains tax exclusion for a married couple filing jointly. Married couples filing a joint return can exclude from income up to $500,000 of capital gain resulting from the sale of a principal residence under the following conditions. Ownership. Either or both spouses must have owned the residence for at least two out of the five years prior to the sale. A use. Both spouses must have used the residence as their principal residence for at least two out of the five years ending on the date of the sale. Note that the two years do not have to be consecutive. A frequency limitation. During the two-year period ending on the date of the sale, neither spouse excluded capital gain resulting from the sale of another personal residence. Note the following respect to married couples and the sale of their principal residence. 1. Use and frequency tests not met by both spouses. In order for a married couple to qualify for the full $500,000 exclusion, either spouse may meet the ownership test. But if both spouses do not meet the use and frequency limitation tests, then the allowable exclusion is limited to the sum of the amount that each spouse would be qualified to exclude if they had not been married. Each spouse is treated as owning the property for the period of time that either spouse owned the property. The following examples illustrate. Example 1. On April 10, 2009, Robert purchased a home for $200,000. 
On June 15, 2016, he married Amy who then moved into Robert's home. Robert and Amy then sold their house on July 1, 2021 for $700,000. Assuming they file a married filing joint 2021 federal income tax return, Robert and Amy can exclude from income the entire $500,000 of capital gain because Robert meets the two-year ownership test and both Robert and Amy meet the two-year use and frequency test. Example 2. Sharon buys a home on July 1, 2015 for $300,000. Sharon marries William on May 20, 2021 at which time William moves in with Sharon. On August 26, 2021 Sharon and William sell their home for $600,000 at a profit of $300,000. Sharon can exclude from income only $250,000 of capital gain even if they file a married, filing joint, tax return for 2021. This is because only Sharon meets the two-year use test. Married couple, each spouse sells a principal residence. If both spouses own principal residences and each spouse meets the ownership, use, and frequency tests, then each spouse can exclude up to $250,000 of capital gain on the sale of his or her own home. The following example illustrates. Example 3. On May 1, 2021, Dan and Dolores got married and purchased a new home. Earlier in 2021 both Dan and Dolores had sold principal residences they each had previously owned and lived in for more than two out of the last five years. Neither Dan nor Dolores had excluded a principal residence capital gain in the prior two years. Dan had realized a capital gain on the sale of his principal residence of $210,000, while Dolores had recognized a capital gain of $430,000 on the sale of her principal residence. Their capital gains total $210,000 plus $430,000 or $640,000. Their total capital gain exclusion is $460,000 that is $210,000 for Dan and $250,000 for Dolores. Dan may not exclude any of Dolores' excess capital gain of $430,000 less $250,000 or $180,000. Surviving spouse sells a principal residence. The $500,000 capital gain exclusion amount that applies to individuals filing a married filing joint return also applies to unmarried surviving spouses if the sale occurs within two years of the death of their spouses. To qualify for the $500,000 exclusion, first, either the surviving spouse or the deceased spouse must meet the two-year ownership requirement for the principal residence immediately before the spouse dies. Second, both spouses must meet the two-year use requirement immediately before the spouse dies, and, Third, neither of the spouses may have used the exclusion during the past two years. The following example illustrates. Example 4. Howard and Rachel are married and have owned their principal residence since March 12, 2012. On June 18, 2021, Howard passes away and Rachel inherits his interest in the principal residence. Assuming Rachel does not remarry and Rachel sells the principal residence before June 18, 2023, she will qualify for the $500,000 capital gain exclusion. Note that the above rule for surviving spouses will not apply if the surviving spouse remarries before a sale or exchange of the residence within the two-year period. Additional information about the use and ownership test. The following are some additional information about the use and ownership test. A use test. Qualifying use of a property as a principal residence may occur while an individual does not own the property. The following example illustrates example 5. Casey, a single individual, lived in a home that she rented from 2014 through 2018 before she purchased the home on January 1, 2019. One month later on February 1, 2019, Casey moved out of the home and moved in with her sister. She rented out her house. While still living at her sister's home, Casey sold her home on February 28, 2021. The five-year period before the sale is March 1, 2016 through February 28, 2021. Ownership Test The ownership test requires that an individual own the principal directly, not through an entity. There are two exceptions. Number 1. A home owned by a single-member limited liability company, for tax purposes is treated as if the home is owned by the LLC member, and therefore can qualify for the $250,000 to $500,000 capital gain exclusion, and 2. An individual who is the grantor of a trust is considered to own a principal residence held in the grantor trust. What happens when there is more than one principal residence? When an individual alternates between two homes, the home that is used for a majority of the time during the year will ordinarily be considered the principal residence, which is the only home that qualifies for capital gain exclusion. 
In addition to the individual's personal use of the property, relevant factors in determining an individual's principal residence include Number 1. The individual's place of employment 2. The principal place of abode of the individual's family Number 3. The address listed on the individual's federal and state tax returns, driver's license, automobile registration, and voter registration card 4. The individual's mailing address for bills and correspondence Number 5. The location of the individual's banks, or number six, the location of religious organizations and recreational clubs with which the individual is affiliated. Note that if an individual owns two principal residences at the same time and occupied one home as a principal residence for years one and two, and then the other principal residence for years three and four, then either would be eligible for the $250,000 to $500,000 capital gain exclusion if sold during years five or six, both principal residences would qualify if the sales occurred more than two years apart and the two out of five occupancy requirement is still met. Purporting the sale of a principal residence. If the sale of a principal residence results in a capital gain that exceeds the excludable amount, then the seller must report the sales price and cost basis of the principal residence sold on IRS Form 8949, Sales and Other Dispositions of Capital Assets. Part 1, for a home owned a year or less or Part 2, for a home, held and owned more than one year, part two, for a home owned for more than one year. In addition, the application code is entered and the amount of any excludable gain is reported as a negative number. A fully excludable capital gain is reported on IRS Form 8949 only if the home seller received a Form 1099-S for the sale. Note that a capital loss resulting from the sale of a principal residence is not reported unless the home seller received a Form 1099-S in which case the sale is reported on IRS Form 8949, even though the capital loss is not deductible. No matter what stage of life you're in, the right life insurance coverage is just a call or click away. It helps to have a plan to achieve a more secure future. Get a free life insurance quote today. Visit us online at jenniferlanginsurancedivision.com or call us at 916-458-4515. At Jennifer Lang Financial Services, we work with over 25 of the top life insurance carriers to find you the best rate. Let us put our expertise to work and find you the best life insurance policy for your age, time horizon and goals. Get started today. Please remember to hit the like, subscribe and share buttons to stay up to date on the latest retirement and financial planning news.